Welcome to the technical seminar on Kansai Special VFB 1012 TS MD3, made in Japan by Morimoto Manufacturing. This is a single chain stitch machine. Single chain stitch meaning blind looper. There is no thread through the looper, only thread through your needles. Okay, it comes in with a very large needle. The elastic thread needs a large size needle. So it comes in standard with a size 21 needle and you can go down to a size 16 needle. The most popular, popular use for this machine is ladies and girls wear. Ladies and girls clothes, mainly blouses and dresses. Tube tops, mainly for tube tops. And here is a quick look at the stitch with elastic thread. This is what it looks like with elastic thread. And you can get up to 200% stretch with this machine here. You can get 200% stretch. We have an introduction to sharing and smocking video on YouTube. So you can get more information on the different types of machines we make for sharing. And it also gives you more information on how much stretch you get and some of the other features of this sharing machine. Okay, so now we're going to have a quick technical seminar to show you where some of your adjustments are. First, we're going to remove the covers. I'm going to remove the top cover. All screws hold the top cover. We're going to remove the face plate. This is where you adjust your needle bar height, your needle bar twist. Okay, we're going to remove our cloth plate. Press a foot, four millimeter Allen. Press a foot. Okay. We're also going to remove the reservoir cover here to show you where the looper avoid eccentric is. We're going to remove the needle plate and the adapter plate. Right now we have six needles in here, but this is a 12 needle quarter inch gauge machine. 12 needles, quarter inch between each needle, two and three quarter inches overall. It also comes in a 3 16 gauge, 12 needle, 3 16 between each needle, two and 1 16 overall. Okay, we're going to remove our adapter plate and our needle plate. Okay, now we're going to remove our feed dog. Okay, and I'm going to remove the reservoir cover. That's your looper avoid eccentric, which we'll talk about a little in a little while. Okay, now we're going to do go over some of the general timings of the machine. Um, you could also go to our previous video on YouTube for DFB 1404 and DFB 1412 timing. Many of the adjustments are the same as the DFB 1404 and 1412, which we already have on YouTube. Okay, so the first thing you would do is needle bar height and the twist of the needle bar. Okay, so your needles have to be centered in your needle plate holes. 
So you would put all 12 needles in and make sure they're centered in the holes. Each needle should be equal distance from the front of the needle plate hole and to the left and to the right of the needle plate holes. That's how you set the twist of your clamp. The height of your needle bar, which you would adjust right here to loosen the three millimeter Allen screw and you can change the height of your needle bar and the twist of your needle bar. Okay, the twist again, equal distance, every needle, all 12 needles should be equal distance from the front of the needle plate hole and from the sides of the needle plate hole. Then your needle bar height, we have a gauge. We have a gauge for your needle bar height. 13.5 millimeters should be the needle bar height. So, right now it looks like it's off maybe a half millimeter. It's close enough, but if I wanted to raise it, if I wanted to raise it a little bit, we come right back in here, we loosen that, we raise the bar a little bit, and then we go back and make sure that we're lined up in our needle plate hole. So after we set our needle bar height and our needle bar, needle bar twist, now we want to look at the angle of the looper. How do we set the angle of the looper? Okay, here's our blind loopers. Now we're going to discuss the angle of the looper, the looper angle, which also is the position, the left to right position of your looper holder. Okay, the looper angle is pretty much, it's a one degree angle. It's a one degree angle, which means pretty much that the looper is straight. It's not turned in a little. It's not turned the opposite way. It's pretty much a straight, one degree angle. Okay, and the way we get this, okay, when we pull this, this looper, this is your looper breakdown. Your looper breakdown lever or shaft. Okay, that's how the looper breaks down. When you put it back in place, this pin must snap into the looper rocker and lock in. Now, when we check the angle of the looper or the position of the where the, where the looper rocker should be, we're going to have to lift this and push it the opposite way. So make sure you don't leave it that way. After checking the looper angle, please make sure that this pin here locks back into the looper rocker. Very important. If you run the machine without that pin locked in, you're going to have damage. Okay, so the looper angle, basically everything is, we want to get, the, what is the looper angle? What is the looper angle? Okay, as the, as the looper approaches the scar, looper approaches the scar, Okay, do we want to twist it in a little as it gets there? Do we want it the other way? This is a one degree angle, pretty much straight. Pretty much straight in. Okay, and the way we show that, okay, we pull out the looper shaft, the looper actuating shaft. We push it back. We bring our needles down. Needles down. Pull the shaft out. Okay, and we're going to line up the needles with the back of the looper. The widest part of the looper, the widest part of the looper, the thickness of the shaft, you follow that up, the widest part of the looper right there, and you want the needle to be 20% from the right side of the looper. The needle should be in 20%, so there it is, the thickness of that looper, the thickness right here of the looper, the width, the width of this looper, right here, okay, the needle should be one-fifth or 20 percent to the left of the looper of the right side of the looper okay and the way you get that adjustment is by loosening these two screws you loosen these two screws and you can move the loop hold the left or right okay so basically the needle at this position basically the needle should be towards the right side of the looper Okay, it's one fifth to twenty percent in from the right side of the looper, but basically, by eye, I'm just going to make sure these all look pretty good. They're closer to the right side. That would be about middle. That would be closer to the left side. Right there's middle. We're talking twenty percent of the width of the looper. Okay, that one looks good. This one here looks like it's in a little bit further. And this one here, but we, we will fine tune that. 
but that's the angle of your looper. Okay, and then again, make sure after you check it. Okay, if the looper stays back like that, if the pin is not locked in, if you run the machine like that, it can cause major damage. So please make sure that you lock that pin, snap it, make sure it locks back in to the looper rod. Okay, also, we forgot to mention how close to the needle do you want to be. So the looper should be as close to the needle as possible without deflecting. When the point of the needle first gets, when the point of the looper, point of the looper, when it first reaches the needle, you want to be as close as possible to the scarf without deflecting the needle. As close as possible to the needle without deflecting it. Okay, so if you look closely here on the third looper, this one is hitting, you can even hear it. That's hitting too much. If you come back here and look at this fifth looper, okay, that's as close as possible. You don't want any wink there. There's no space at all. As close as possible, but without deflecting it. So this looper is too close to the needle. We would have to back that off a little bit. So we can come right here. These screws right here, each looper has their individual screw. And as you can see, that's how you change the angle too. Okay, so looper screw, bring it right up against the star. Tighten it up. Check it. There's no space. And we don't hear that anymore. It's not pinging. It's not hitting the looper. Or and it's not deflecting the needle. Hitting the needle or deflecting the needle. All right, next. Next is your synchronization or your timing. Okay. What does that mean? When the loopers come in and the needles go up, the point of your looper should be in a certain spot on your scarf of your needle. And the same thing, when the loopers are coming back and the needles are going down, the point of the looper should be at a certain position on the scarf of the needle. For this machine, it's four millimeters. Here's a little picture. For 1012 here, this is 1412 on top, which is a double chain. 1012 is a single chain stitch. So, as I'm, you can, it's four millimeters above the eye of the needle. Okay, that's the position on the scarf that you want. So, as my, as my loopers are coming in, and my needles are going up, when the point of my looper gets to the scarf, gets to the middle of the needle, you want to be four millimeters above the eye of the needle. And then on your back stroke, needles are coming down, loopers are going back, Again, about the same position, four millimeters above the eye of the needle. Okay, we also have to set the looper distance. When your needles are right here, picture here, six three, looper distance. When your needles are all the way down and the loopers are all the way forward, okay, towards you, needles all the way down, 1.8 millimeters between your the needle and the point of the looper. So this distance right here, this space right here between your looper, the point of your looper and the needle should be 1.8 millimeters. Okay, here's the distance right here. Needles all the way down, loopers all the way forward, all the way towards you, all the way back. Okay, you want a 1.8, it's 1.8 to the middle of the needle. So that's about 1.5 millimeter to this front side of the needle. Okay, 1.8 to the middle, so it's probably about 1.5 to the front side. Okay, and to make this adjustment, to make this adjustment, you have to go inside under the reservoir cover. There's a seven millimeter hexagon screw. And if you loosen that screw, you can move your looper holder, the entire looper holder. You can move the entire looper holder forward or backward to get your looper distance. Again, if you visit the, the, the prior video on DFB 1404, 1412, you can see all of these adjustments. Okay, getting back to the position of your looper on the scarf. As we said, we're going in, you want to be four millimeters above the eye. And it's about the same coming back, four millimeters above the eye of the needle. Well, the way you make this adjustment, if that's not right, that's called your timing or your synchronization. 
Okay, right here is your looper avoid essential. You have these two screws right here. If you loosen them, you can move it. You can speed the loopers up by moving it one way, or you can slow them down by moving, the, moving them the opposite way. So that's how you would get this position. Again, you can see us adjust the looper eccentrics on our previous video. But that's where you would get your four mil. So if I move that a little bit, the loopers are going to be higher on the scarf coming in and lower on the scarf coming back. And for this machine, we want them about the same. So that's what this is going to give you. It's going to slow up your loopers or speed up your loopers. Okay, so basically, we spoke about four different ways to adjust you how to set your looper. Number one, you got your looper distance, 1.8 millimeters. Number two, you got your angle. We spoke about your angle. Pretty much straight. It's a one degree, which you bring the needle down to the back side of the looper. One fifth. That's that one fifth setting from the right side of the looper. Okay, and then you have your synchronization, your timing. In this case, we want four millimeters above the eye going in and four millimeters above the eye coming out. Okay, and then you don't want to be too close to the needle. Where do you position the looper? Point of the looper as close as possible to the needle. When it first gets to the needle, when it first reaches the scarf, you want to be as close as possible without deflecting it. Okay, those are your four settings, pretty much your four settings on your looper. Okay, very good. This machine doesn't have any needle guards. Um, you don't need any needle guards on this machine. Other machines have needle guards, which sort of protect the uh, the needle from deflecting too much when you're going over seams and everything. But the sharing machine uh, usually doesn't go any, any thick seams, so this machine doesn't have any needle guards. Okay, next, how do you adjust your stitch length? How do you adjust your stitch length? Okay, stitch length is right here. This is your stitch regulator. You loosen this nut. Again, you can go to our video, DFP1404. Our previous video has all of these adjustments on there. So I'm not going to make them all here. You can go, go visit that video. But you would loosen this nut, and then by turning this screw, if you loosen that screw, you get a longer stitch. If you tighten that screw, you get a shorter stitch. Now your puller. First you set your stitch length, then you have to set your puller in relationship to your stitch length. You don't want your puller pulling too fast or too slow. So to adjust that, you can get a small amount of adjustment by loosening the, screw, the nut here and raising this up and down. You see the slot in that lever? There's a slot in the lever. And by moving it up and down, you can speed up your puller or slow up your puller. If you need a large amount of, a large amount of adjustment, here, up here inside your top cover, you have a 3 8 millimeter nut. Again, if you loosen that nut and move it back, you're going to speed up the puller. If you move it forward, you're going to slow down the puller. So the puller you must set in relationship to your stitch length. So if you put it at the maximum stitch length, you're going to have to adjust your puller accordingly. If you make a very small stitch, you're going to have to adjust your puller accordingly. So now we're going to put it back together, and first we'll show you how it sews elastic thread. For elastic thread, you need a metering device. For elastic thread, you do not use tension. Use a metering device to put the tension for the amount of tension that you need on the elastic thread. Okay, so first I'm going to put it back together and then we will show you how to set up your metering device. That's for elastic thread. Okay, now we're going to install our feed dog. You have to drop your loopers down, pull the shaft, and just drop down. Feed dog. Slot it, drop the feed dog right in there on that screw, and before we do that, you have a height adjustment pins here, height adjustment pin, height adjustment pin. That's to level. You want to level your feed dog. It's got to be level on both sides. This is a wide feed dog, so it has to be level all the way across. So you have two height adjustment pins. You would loosen these screws. If you have to change the height, loosen the screws and adjust those pins. Okay. Now we drop the feed dog in here. Okay. Tighten up the screw. Make sure 
So let me get my hands in there so I could equal pressure down. Go on top of those pins. Okay. Then we take your needle plate. Might have to remove the needles to get this in there. I either have to remove the puller or take the needles out to get that in there. So we'll have to take the needles out real quick. Because I don't know. the needle plate in there and as we look from this side you want basically a full tooth one full tooth above the needle plate the tooth of the feed dog approximately one full tooth but a good way you can check it put your needle back in put your needle back in and just take you could use one of our anti special rules but just you want to Make sure as you turn the hand wheel, needle's going down, feed dog is also going down. And you don't, just as the needle enters the throw plate, that's when you want your feed dog to disappear below the needle plate. So just as the needle enters the needle plate, and this one looks perfect, your feed dog should disappear. Okay, so I'll show that again. We have feed dog, feed dog's above the plate, above the plate, I'm turning the hand wheel. Above the plate, above the plate, needle entering, needle plate, and the feed dog disappears. Now you want the same thing on the other side. Same thing on the other side. Okay, this one looks a little higher, so it's slightly higher. This side is dropped down all the way, and this one is slightly higher. So in that situation, I would have to so those pins I showed you earlier, you would have to take this back off. And your height adjustment pin. All right. You would loosen that screw and lower the height adjustment pin on this side. Because this side was a little higher than that side. Just lower it a little bit, make sure they're level on back sides, on both sides. Okay. We spoke about our feed dog. Now we're putting the needle plate back on. And now we're going to talk about the presser foot. Okay, the sharing presser foot. Sharing presser foot. These steps are what gives you your sharing or your gathering. The different steps on the presser foot. The different steps on the presser foot makes a crease in the garment as you're sewing it. Okay, and we have different steps for more or less sharing. Right here we have a two millimeter step, and it also comes with a four millimeter step. Okay, for more or less sharing. You can also run just a flat foot without any of the steps. You can run it flat, and when you're sewing elastic thread, you will get a little bit of gathering just by using, just with the elasticity, of the thread, you're going to get some gathering. So if you only want a small amount of gathering with elastic thread, you might run it with just a flat foot. You might not need the steps. If you want a little more sharing, you would add a two millimeter step. And if you want even more than that, you can go with the four millimeter step. Just for an example, okay, right here, I would say this right here is a large amount of sharing, right there. That's a lot of sharing. And then if you change the Right here, you might see, if you use the elastic thread only, you might get something that looks like that right here. Okay, so now we're going to install the presser foot. Presser foot bar is right here. Tension spring, more or less. If you need more tension or less tension. Okay, we're going to lift. We're going to lift our presser bar. And put our presser foot on there. Put my needle back in quick to line it up. Let me get a couple in there on each side to make sure we center it good. Okay. 
Okay. And we're going to make sure we're centered. Make sure your needle is centered in the hole. Equal distance, front, back, sides of the hole. And four millimeter. Hold it in place while you tighten it. Okay. And our presser foot is on with the two millimeter step. Okay, next we're going to discuss the eyelets in the metering device. So when you're sewing, you're sewing elastic thread, you're going to use this metering device. This is the metering device. We're going to show you how to install the metering device. This is what you use for your tension on the elastic thread. When you sew with elastic thread, this is what we're going to use for our tension. Okay, this will be mounted here, like so. Okay, and these are the eyelets. We use these two eyelets when we sew elastic thread. Metering device back here, two screws. Okay, this arm is what's going to drive your metering device. This will connect back here to the puller drive, the puller drive shaft. So this metering device will connect here. Screw it down here. Okay. Installing our metering device. And then lever right here. Remove the nut. Okay. okay. Here's our screw. Two washers on this side. One washer on the inside, then your your ball joint here, your connecting one. Ball joint and connecting rod, and then another washer. So your two washers go on the right side. And your nut. And if you think this lever right here could, this will, uh, you can get more or less metering by moving this lever here. This puller right here will pull faster or slower by adjusting this lever. Okay. Also the tension, we'll talk about that when we thread it up. This is how you get the tension on your elastic thread. Okay, but we're gonna tighten it. Let's tighten this up. I think it's a 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter. And that's all there is to putting on your metering device. This is attached to your puller drive and two screws and there's two pins on there too so it holds in the casting for the pins to secure it better and two screws so now our metering device is on we're going to move it to the sewing table and thread it up with elastic thread okay now we're we're ready to thread our machine up we showed you how to install the metering device for elastic thread so we're about to thread our machine up here you see our thread stand. The thread stand comes with tension, but for elastic thread, you do not go through the tension. If you use regular thread, you would go through the tension and you don't use the metering device. For elastic thread, we use the metering device. We do not go through the tension. Okay, also the elastic thread, the way it comes off the spool, is very critical. Most of the time you have thread breaking, it's in this area over here, it gets tangled. The thread gets tangled up, it gets hung on something, it gets caught on maybe another spool of thread, it might get caught on itself, so you have to make sure the elastic thread is pulling off the spool nice and easy and consistently and make sure nothing is in the way that it can get hung on. You might have to remove, you might have to take off, you might not put every one of these on there to make sure it doesn't spring off of here and get caught on there. 
Okay. Also, the more space. If you have this table set up right here, uh, if you had a little more space, if we move this thread stand back a little further, the more space between the meter and device and the thread stand, it seems to work better. It seems to feed the elastic thread more consistently. Okay, now we're gonna thread the machine. We're gonna thread one spool. I got five spools already threaded. We're gonna show you how we thread it up with the metering device. Okay, elastic thread, hang on. I gotta come through here. Okay, we go right through the eyelet. We bypass this tension. Okay, at this point, get my tweezers. At this point right here, this lever right here, because we're gonna have to go in between these two rollers. You got these two rollers here on your metering device. The thread has to go in between there. So you lift, push down on this lever. And there's a slot in the casting right here. You put that lever in that slot, and now we have the opening there. Okay, so to open these rollers up to get our thread through there. We push down on the lever, we close it. There's a slot right here in the casting of the metering device. And now we have an opening there. We can thread our elastic thread. Okay, so we grab our thread. come back here at this point we close this so we're going to close this back up okay pop that out and your rollers will close back up that's the amount of tension right here is how much tension that these rollers give the elastic thread pulling the elastic thread so we need more tension we tighten it we need less tension we tighten it less tension we loosen it Puller, yes. We spoke about this earlier. You can slow up your puller or speed it up by loosening this nut and adjusting this lever. And this tension here will give you more pressure on the thread or less pressure. Pressure foot to get started. Get under the puller also. Okay. Turn your hand wheel a few times. Let the stitch pick up before you. your amount of tension, there's your amount of shearing or gathering, running six needles, that's every other needle on this machine, this is a 12 needle quarter, we're running every other needle, if you ran every needle, the shearing, the gathering would be a little more, if you ran every needle, um, more tension will give you 
more sharing. If you have more tension on your elastic thread, you get more gathering and more sharing. Um, if you change the step. So if we change from a two millimeter step to the four millimeter step, that will give us a lot more sharing. Okay, so anyway, this is your basic standard model. Model number again, DFB 1012 PS MD3. That's the model number if you're sewing elastic thread. 